Hello YouTube, so if you're like me, uh, you might have a fairly sizable collection of VHS tapes that are just kind of lying around gathering dust. And you've probably been wanting to convert these over to DVD for a long time, but you've just never had the time to do so. Well, there are right ways and there are wrong ways to do this. And I will kind of give you a little primer on how I go about doing VHS tapes when I convert them to DVD. So now in this case I have a T120 that dates back to uh, probably uh, late 80s, early 90s. In this case it has moonlighting on it. And we have eight episodes of the show that are on here waiting to be put over to DVD. So obviously you need yourself a good VCR in my case. This is why you saw my Panasonic in earlier videos because I was going to bring it out because I had to do this. And a little bug there. And so I just have the uh, output connectors on the VHS right into my ATI ATI capture card. Now my ATI capture card is a BT8 878 chip and if you're going to use a capture card for doing this uh, the 878 is probably your ideal uh, capture card to do it because the 878 will ignore macrovision and other copy protection schemes whereas I found with uh, newer chips they don't do that and so now I use a program to capture called IUVCR and for what it does it's actually a fairly reasonable price it's shareware I think it was like $9.99 to register or something like that. I did this a long time ago. And just to kind of make this a little, a little easier to see, I'll bump my screen, screen resolution down a little bit here. Here, we'll do 800 by 600. So for whatever reason, when I resize the screen, it gives me the old Luna uh, theme again, which I've never liked too much. But anyways, what you do... What you do here uh, for IUVCR is you've got some various uh, various settings that you can adjust depending on what you want. Uh, in this case, for video, you can you can pick and choose uh, what you're going to take your video and audio from. In this case, it's going to be composite in, and then you've got a codec that you can save to so that you're not running through megabytes of data a second and in this case I'm using an MJPEG codec to do it. And now for audio this is uh, what you want 16-bit stereo 48 kilohertz for doing DVD and when you go to let's do capture format here under under video these are the specs that you want 720 by 480 YUI 2 color space 2997 frames per second anything else and it's not gonna be correct and so then we have a thing here where we can hit a preview and we get our uh, screen here and because I'm just at 800 by 600 I'll bump it down a little bit but I'll hit play and get this going So now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're definitely going to want to adjust uh, tracking on the VCR because you can see there's a nasty little tracking band in the bottom of the screen. And we have Tom Hanks. I didn't know Tom Hanks got started moonlighting. So now if you're doing a long six hour tape like this, you'll definitely want to keep an eye on this because what's going to happen is you'll get, uh, you could get a thing where the, uh, Brian Cranston, wow. Al Franken, what is this? Chris Isaac? Dan Loria?
It says it's all all creatures or something like that. Stephen Root. Stephen Root. There's a lot of big names here that I'm seeing on the screen. I'm wondering if this is music by Michael Kamen, if this is well, not either if Mom recorded over something by accident. I have a feeling she recorded over something by accident. But anyways, just to kind of uh, go into a little more detail here. Directed by Tom Hanks. Oh, I bet I know what this is. I bet this is uh, uh, that HBO miniseries. Uh, yeah, the HBO miniseries about going to the moon. So this isn't Moonlighting, but this is something uh, just as interesting. Brian Cranston. Yeah, so that makes sense what this is here. But anyways, uh, one thing that, I see, that I've seen a lot with uh, people when they do uh, these video conversions is that they'll have their uh, video input settings all screwed up. And so here's what I do for this. With, uh, with IUVCR, you can pull up a little screen here with the, uh, the BT878 driver where you can adjust your video settings. And I'll pull this down here a little bit here. But you've got contrast, which controls uh, the overall brightness of the picture. And then you've got brightness, which controls how white, how, or how white your blacks are in the picture. And so what I do with these is I set my brightness to a point where I just start to see a little bit of little bit of lightness in the blackest parts of the picture and then I set my contrast to the point where you see the whites not getting any whiter and then I back it off a little bit so that you get so that I see full detail in the uh, full detail in the light parts of the picture because if you go too high on your contrast you, you wash out your whites and if you go too low on your brightness then you wash out all your blacks Here's Al Franken, and there's Dan Loria. But anyways, uh, another thing to do with uh, these BTA48 cards is if you are in an NTSC country, you'll want to use NTSC-MJ as opposed to just NTSC-M. Because what happens with NTSC-M on these 848 chips is that there's a little feature that they have that's called coring, where it basically clips off all the dark parts of the picture, and then you get really annoying black. And there was Brian Cranston. Wow. That's a Lots of lots of big names here in this Tom Hanks thing. I forgot exactly what this is called, but yeah, well, actually, I'm recording over moonlighting, but yeah. And so now that uh, I've taken ten minutes to show you that, make sure you've got audio coming in, and then hit record, and I'll let it record for. 30 seconds or so. I don't think that was Brian Cranston. I saw that actually looks like Stephen Colbert, to be perfectly honest with you. So yeah, that's enough to do that. And you can show up the preview. So that was part one when you capture your stuff. Uh, what I do now is I go down here to Virtual Dub and I'll open up the file. And so there's what I just recorded. And of course you can set your options for 4x3 and all that other stuff so that you've got a proper preview. But then I go to audio and I switch it over to full processing mode and then I go audio again. And I do a volume. Adjust volume of audio channels. And in my case, for my VCR and the way I do it, I have to bring it up about 9 dB to get good volume. And then for video, again, make sure you're in full processing mode. Compression. And again, make sure that you select uh, a codec, or else your files are going to be humongous, so in my case, it's going to be the same MJPEG codec. And so now what I do here is I go to filters 
And the first filter I add is a levels filter. And what levels does is it brings all your brightness and your the bright areas of your picture and the dark areas of your picture to a point where it's uh, taking up the full range. So in my case, what I'm going to do here I'll find a part of the picture that has a lot of or a lot of really good contrast to it, like this one particular scene here. And I'll hit sample frame, which will give me a histogram of all my light and dark areas. And I already have this up pretty good here. I just have to do just but basically what you want to do is you want to drag these arrows the the far right and the far left arrows so that they come up to the ends of the histogram. Uh, histogram display and then you hit OK and then another one uh, depending on what you got doing here like if for instance if your picture is from a really noisy noisy source you can do uh, noise reduction you can get a noise reduction filter for virtual dub and you can throw that in there and then it'll smooth out your picture and this filter if you these filters if you tweak them just right they're actually quite wonderful and they do a quite wonderful job And so, we'll just say that this is ready to go. And so, you save as AVI. Actually, I don't want to do that here. Oh, wait. I hope if I hit the right keyboard. So, virtual double process the file. And now time comes to make it into an MPEG-2 file. And so to do that, I use this program here. And what I will do, let's bring this down a little bit so I can actually see the whole thing here. Take our saved video into there. There we go. And now I already have uh, I already I already have it set up for DVD. So you can just drag and drop the files in here, and this does double pass or two pass encoding. And it does a first pass where it uh, analyzes, and then it does a second pass where it actually encodes. And then you're ready to put it onto a DVD. And then you can use whatever DVD program you like to uh, create your your DVD files. But when you do it this way, there are uh, there are software uh, software suites out there that will let you do it automatic, or will do most of the hard work automatically for you. But typically, you tend to lose a little something uh, when you when you let those programs do their thing because they they try and do a best uh, best fit for all kind of uh, approach to uh, to encoding video, and sometimes that's just not the most practical. So I like to have manual control over how I encode my uh, my VHS tapes into DVD, and that's a little primer on how I do things. So I just wrapped up encoding and. That's just a little demo, so please like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and thanks for watching.